Hey everybody, I'm going to make a different video, different from all the 1,500 plus videos I've made since 2006. This has to do with economics, except maybe there's one video that's similar, but nothing like this. I'm going to explain to you very quickly why we must raise our debt limit and why it's very important for you to understand the importance of government spending in our economy. What's behind me that you can barely see, it's actually a little bit above me, is called the ISLM curve. So let me grab the camera and bring you in a little closer so you can see what's going on here and that's it, okay? So this is something that I learned. My background is in city planning and my concentration is in urban economics, okay? So I've taken over the years something like 20 economics courses. I don't know how much. Anyway, this is my favorite, okay? So I'm, I'm going to grab my little Sharpie pin here. See that? And we're going to get to work real quick, all right? This is R, and R essentially represents the rate of interest, interest rates. This horizontal line of this graph right here is Y, that's income. Now I'm simplifying things a bit, just a bit. LM is a line that essentially represents the supply of money in the economy. And IS, what some call investment savings, it really represents the amount of government spending and other types of spending, all types of fiscal spending that go into the economy, taxes, for example. So the IS curve, for example, if government spending were to increase, the IS curve would move out, basically up. And if we had an increase in taxes, it would go basically down because you're tightening the money supply. Actually, birth curves, curves would be affected. But let's stick to what would happen if the debt ceiling was not raised on the 2nd of August, okay? What would happen is this. Because we're affecting the supply of money in the economy, right now we have equilibrium of A here, right? This is what would happen. This LM curve would go this way. Right there. So we'll call this right here L M sub 1, like that, all right? Got that? L M sub 1. So now, what's going on here? This is our new equilibrium. Now, what does that mean? What does equilibrium mean? It means the balance between where the L M curve falls and where the I S curve falls. So what's going on now? Two things are going on. First of all, We've got higher interest rates, so we have R1, right? Second, and most dire, Y1, right here. See that? See that? What's going on? That's I, Y1, and then this is, we'll call this Y sub O, okay? So that's Y sub O and Y1. So we've had a fall in what? In income, in gross domestic product. A fall okay now you would say hey what about the initial interest rate yeah 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 yeah, yeah. it's right here okay RO see that so we've got what an increase in interest rates see that and a f drop in government income now you would say okay where did this curve came from it was created by Sir John Hicks in 1937 and it stood the test of macroeconomic time since then it's a great way to understand how basically money supply and interest rates and all the basic major factors of government of our economy are interrelated. It's, it's, so it's a great way to explain it in one fell swoop. Okay, so the reason why it's important that we don't let this happen is another reason. Our most recent data shows that our economy only increased at a 1.3% rate. That's it. And ever since, if you exclude the first quarter of, of the fourth, fourth quarter really of 2008 when Barack Obama became president, ever since then we've had what? We've had growth, including now. That came 
primarily because of the stimulus package. Now, before you start yelling and screaming and yelling because you say I'm a conservative, this has nothing, I'm going to tell you something, look at me, okay, first of all. This has nothing to do with being liberal or conservative. This is simple macroeconomics. If you didn't take macroeconomics, you should take macroeconomics. If you forgot it, you've got to remember it, okay? Okay? Now, back to this. Um, what we're talking about here is we've had a stimulus package. Now, remember in macroeconomics was GDP is another expression of why. In other words, our total income for our, our country is expression of our country's income or why. What's why? That's that right there, right? Now, what does GDP equal? It equals this. It equals C plus I plus G plus E minus I. And you would say, what's all that, okay? That's consumption, what we buy at the store, plus investments, what businesses spend to build plant, equipment, buildings, everything else, plus G, which is government spending, plus E, which are exports. Those goods that we send out of the United States to be bought in other places like, say, China. Minus I, which is imports. Imports are those goods and services that are brought here. Like, for example, the iPhone that I bought that was actually made in China. Boo, Apple. Okay? Love the iPhone. Boo that action. That's it. So this is the whole of our government, of our uh, American economy. But the point is, what's in it? It's G. So you start, when you call for less government spending... And you, do, you have a problem with consumption because people are unemployed and businesses aren't investing, then what happens here it goes down. But then you, to all that, you had the coup de grace and you say, I want to just decrease the debt limit. I don't want it to increase at all. And so you say, all right, I'm going to screw with the money supply. I'm going to cause a, an increase in interest rates and I'm going to cause a decrease in income. In other words, Basically, you want to wreck our economy, okay? We've got to stop this ideological thinking and start a cold, rigid economic way of thinking that gets us out of, gets us out of this mess. We've increased the debt limit before. We've got to do it again. But the problem is that there are too many people, and I'll just say this, who insist, really insist on using their ideology in place of cold, hard economics. Now, yes, there are economists who have the ide ideas, there are current conservative economists and liberal economists, but there are also cold, hard, simple mathematical economists that only stick to building models and they'll tell you what the models say and they'll admit the models have a bias here or there, all right? This is not one of those models and that's why it stood the test of time. And it stood the test of time because it stands up over actual data analysis. That's why. There's no ideology here. So my point is, we've got to get away from this thinking, but you have to go back to understanding economics. If you didn't take it, take it before. If you want to understand it, run through a model like this. Read, read, read. If your head hurts a little bit, struggle through it. Don't go away from the web page. Read, read, read. Talk, talk, talk. And stop with the ideological talks. All right? Pay attention and call for an increase in our debt limit right now. Thank you.